first time I got on the tee, I hit like a 300 yard drive down the fairway and nobody could believe. I'm like, shit is easy. Come back 30 minutes later, I couldn't hit the ball. I'm J.R. Smith, and this is my passion. Striped it. Uh, my name is J.R. Smith. I'm 36 years old, and I'm a college golfer. I'm self-taught. My first time playing, I was with uh, in, a, in a fundraiser, and Char Lewis is his first fundraiser. And uh, Moses Malone got me, finally got me out the cart and uh, got me to swing a golf club. So that was my first uh, person who inspired me to play the game. Being a 36-year-old freshman, man. That's weird, because I get like this new old vibe. Like I, it's, everything is so new to me, because I've never been to school and stuff like that. So it's a, it's a very weird feeling that I, I really like, though. For me, listening to Ray Allen about how you know people look at us as athletes, and especially black athletes, um, it, it really inspired me to go to school. It really um, stuck with me trying to continuously to elevate myself as a man. What well, made me choose North Carolina a t is they had a great liberal studies program. Um, initially, I wasn't going to school and play golf. I was just going to go to school and try to get my degree. And I looked at a lot of HBCUs, and it was just the perfect match for the curriculum, having uh, distance learning and whatnot. And then out of nowhere, distance learning went to, from 100 to damn near zero, and I had to go on campus because I started playing golf. I had to try out. Um, I tried out. I played two two rounds with the coach because that was the main focus. And people kept saying, "Like, oh, Josh was going to join the golf team. Josh was going to join the golf team." His first initial reaction was like, "Whoa, whoa, whoa can he even play?" And uh, once I showed him that, um, everything everything else took off from there. But it was really for me, it meant a lot because it wasn't like he was looking at me as a superstar who's going to bring money to the school or to the to the uh, to the sport. And for me, it was something I had to earn, and it was uh, I gained I gained a lot of respect for him. My goals for my golf career: I want to I want to have tournament uh, tournaments and do more inclusion of minority communities and try to really grow the game. Uh, I feel like there's a lot of kids who don't have the opportunity just because they don't have the funds. You know, uh, I mean, a putter goes three hundred dollars, a driver's five hundred dollars, a set of irons is twelve hundred dollars, and you know, a rubber basketball and football is. 12 bucks, five bucks, and it's just easier and cheaper to play the game. So being able to uh, find ways to implement more minority communities who can afford the game. There we go. It feels really good to be the first professional athlete to sign an NIL deal, just because I don't want, I don't want my peers to think that once they're done with, uh, once they're done with their professional sport, it's over. I really want to get that message across to them is where you can do multiple things other than just play basketball. Like if I wanted to, I could have got my degree when I was playing. It, it would have been yeah, a little bit more strenuous on my time, but I mean, you get so much free time. You have, it's, it's plenty enough. I mean, for us as professional athletes, we get so spoiled and people catering to us and the things we have, everything else is going on is so much more important or, or the game is so much more important than everything else. And then it's really not. When I'm on a practice range and even when I'm about to hit my shots on the course, I try to envision every shot I want to hit. I try to see the hole, whatever hole I'm trying to play, what it looks like, stuff like that. And try to take it into account so when I'm there, it's like I did it already. What's the most common question you get on Cadiz? Uh, the most common question, it's everybody's first question. How was it playing with LeBron? And the second question is, where is LeBron? I'm like, if I'm sitting here with you, how do I know where he's at? So, I don't know. Playing along with LeBron was amazing. The opportunities you get on the court um, alone is just, I never shot that many open shots because he, he, Kelly, K-Love, and Kyrie attract so much attention. But the way he was able to manage the games and manage practices and stuff like that, uh, for me, it was probably like one of the greatest experiences to have. My favorite player in the NBA right now, I would say Ja Morant, either Ja or Melo. I mean, watching them too. I mean, obviously they're 
two totally different players uh, as far as point guards, but um, the way they think the game, the way they uh, get their teammates involved, as well as be able to score the ball and take over. For Josh, somebody who plays above the rim the way he does and can still dish and score, and I feel like I haven't seen in, in a long time. Um, LaMelo is such a huge point guard. And, he gives you that magic vibe, you know, a, a bigger point guard and push the ball and, and really loves getting guys involved. Um, I want to give it to the youth and the younger guys right now, because obviously LeBron and LeBron, Katie and Kyrie and those guys, Steph. But uh, for me, I really enjoy watching the younger guys play. <laughs> I'm not thinking about nothing. As soon as I start thinking about something, it's going to be in the trees. No, I'm, uh, honestly, I am, though. I'm trying to bring it get used to bringing the club closer to my body so I'm not cutting it as much or turning it over right to left as much. I'm just trying to hit the three or four yard draws. And for me, it's like when I get out there and I get to pushing, I always take this right shoulder and come across and it creates that spin. So I'm trying to get used to dropping it back into that slot consistently. For me, I mean, school is more important. I'm not one of these younger guys who's, you know, trying to go pro. I've lived my dream and um, I'm, I'm pretty satisfied in that. I would obviously, you want to be as competitive as you can be, but, you know, being realistic this is my second dream. So it's not an end all be all for me. And I realize that for me more than anything is I continuously set these academic goals for myself. I can't even describe the feeling. I ain't even gonna lie to you. But, bro, when I tell you 4.0, when I tell you some shit you work for, oh my God. I'm trying to be as competitive as I can be within the classroom, just as well as the golf course. And uh, so I'm trying to flip that narrative for myself more than anybody else.